Hi, it's Zincalicious here. Today we're going to be taking you through the faux parchment technique. We're going to be using our ornate leaf stencil, which is available either as a six inch stencil and mask, as an eight inch stencil and mask, or as a twin set. We'll be showing you how easy it is to create from just a plain flat element into a 3D effect. So you can easily just get that as though it's been die cut even though the card is completely flat. There's no die cutting, no nothing on it. And we're going to take you through the steps to do it and after we've done the basic parchment technique we'll then take you on and show how you can actually tint and put a bit of colour in there. The supplies you're going to need for this demo today is the stencil sorry I've got a cat meowing around my feet um, we've got craft card or any sort of dark toned card it could be a grey, it could be a blue, a green so as long as it's a dark toned because we need something for the white to stand off so obviously talking about white I use the Brilliance White um, it's a pigment based ink and which means the ink will stay on top and not soak into the card and you'll get a lovely finish with this ink just for stamping your actual image or doing the shadows we need a dark tone and I prefer not to stamp in black black and white when you're trying to do a soft wintry card is too strong so always try and stamp in a nice brown tone so it doesn't matter which whichever one this is memento rich cocoa available in the large and small and there's the versifying Claire. The other thing that we need are the white pens and I say pens because there's different ones that we do. This is a 05 Secura pen. A lot of the Securas that you get are the 08 or the 10 which leaves you quite a thick line around the edge of your card. So what I'll just show you on here is the difference between I don't know if you can see this this is the number eight pen and this one is the 05 pen so it's a much finer line when you see them next to each other so we've got the 05 pen this is the Signo Uniball this is what we generally call the Rolls Royce of white pens because it, it, it is a good white pen. Um, this one we use for the shading because we also use a brush and we can use water and then just brush it out a bit to soften it. The other thing I use a lot is the Posca pens and if you've ever seen any of our other videos not only does this write very fine but you can also do fantastic splatter effects with it so easily. So we'll be using that one as well. Okay, so I have the craft card and what I'm going to do is I'm not going to tape this down. What I've already done on my stencil is I've added some tape top and bottom and this is just low tack masking tape. You can use washi tape, um, decorators tape. So it doesn't have to be a specific stencil tape or anything. So once I've got it positioned where I want it on the card, I'm just going to cover the edges and especially me because I always seem to get ink everywhere. If I leave a little corner open, I'm guaranteed I will get ink on it. I'm actually working on a uh, one of the metal magnetised boards. So I use these because especially like this, when I, it comes to doing my drawing, these magnets will keep it held really tight down. This is a Wendy Vecchi one, which is a 12 by 12. And I, I just fold a piece of paper over on mine. So when I am doing a lot of inky things, I can just draw on it if I need to just wipe something off. And obviously we can recycle the paper afterwards. So now I'm happy where I've taped this down. What I'm going to do is show you some different brushes that I use for the inks. Um, some of you might remember we used to produce the ink dusters and we brought these to the market oh, 
must be a good 10, 12 years ago now. Um, unfortunately, we're not producing these at the moment. Uh, so it wouldn't be fair of me to demo with those. So what I'm going to do is show you a selection of what people are using. The one thing I would say is don't use foam things with these. There's a lot of sharp edges and if you've got your blending foams or your smoothie sponges, obviously you're going to catch into them and it will rip them. So what I would recommend is a brush. We do the stencil brushes online. These are the Royal Lang Nickel ones. Um, a lot of people are using these makeup brushes. Uh, there's a few good and bad points about them. The they do blend lovely, really do. And to be honest, I've never paid more than six pound for a pack of 12 of these. But there's a difference in a lot of them. Not in the actual brush heads, they will all blend lovely. But what the difference is, is this. See how flimsy that is compared to this one. And the nice thing with these is you can actually take these off and then just hold them properly. So if you can, always get the golf ball style because of uh, not golf ball but golf head style simply because you can take the handle off it gives you somewhere nice to grip them it just sits nicely in the palm of your hand and blending with them is really easy then when you want to store them again just pop the handle back on i think these for a pack of 12 and they came in all different sizes and shapes um was 6.99 so you can't go wrong off eBay, of course, or Amazon. Um, so yeah, again, this is one of the, what I class as the flimsy ones that obviously if you were trying to, you spend more time trying to stop it bending up. Um, the other ones, if you like the pale headed ones, these were by Obsession and these came with an absolutely huge one and two smaller ones. So again, they all work exactly the same. You could spend £30 on one or £6 on a set and they all do the same thing. So I'm going to be using these for doing the blending and I will show you how we go. Right, so I've got my stencil down. I've just got one of my mini blending mats and all I'm going to do first is take some of the white ink pad now I could take it direct but I prefer to put some on my mat and this is not a pearlescent this is just a flat white and all I'm going to do is just pick some up and I don't want to cover the whole card so all I'm going to do first of all is let's just make sure that we get the stem coloured in and don't forget anything that you get on the mylar here you can obviously just swipe up and swipe it into the card so now I'm just going to concentrate on just getting some of these leaves done. So what you want is to bring the softness into the centre of your card. Okay, so we're not going too high in there. And same again, we'll get this side. If ever you've got any of these broken magnets from any of your presses, this is what they're fabulous for is just popping onto these just to hold your stencils down. Okay, so don't worry too much at the moment at building the colour up too much because we can check the colour afterwards and we can always come in and add a bit more colour into this. All we're wanting to do first is just get just the, the, the effect of the snow. Okay, so I'm keeping the centre free because obviously if I come and do some stamping I want to be able to colour in white and with the white pen other thing about brushes is that it does get into every nook and cranny in your stencil okay 
Right, so what I'm going to do first is just have a quick peek at this. Okay, so what we're going to do now is I'm going to take this off and obviously I can check and see. The, the nice thing about um, the Brilliance is that because it's pigment ink, the ink actually sits on top of the card. It doesn't soak into it like a dye ink. So if you have missed any bits or you've maybe your ink's run under a bit, you can just with a brush just take some of this ink out again. And we're going to be going around this to really emphasise the lines. So what I'm going to do now is take the tape off these. And because it is reusable, we can just pop it to one side. So if, say, you were doing a batch of these cards, then just save your tape and use them for the next one. Right. This is now where the white pen comes in. So I'm just going to line this up again. If you don't have a magnetic board like I'm using, then obviously you would need to retape this down. But for me, for doing this bit now, I can just come in with the magnets and just hold it down where I need. So I'm going to take the 05 pen. Like I said, the, the other pens are, are sort of quite thick on this. And just to show you on here, the 05 is such a lovely fine line compared to the standard Secura or the Signo. So what I'm going to do, always keep a piece of card. When you're working with white pens, as you're working on any card stock, you, it's a roller ball in here and as it's going round, it's picking fibres up. So if ever you get to a point and you find that your pen isn't working, then it's probably because you've picked fibres up and it's got a bit clogged up. So I always, as I'm working, and I'll start, remember that there's no rush in this. Slow and steady wins the race, as they say. So all I'm going to do is just start tracing around the edge here. And every now and again, I'm just going to wipe the fibres off that have caught in the ball. This will always just ensure that you keep this lovely white line going. Okay, so just take your time. There's, there's no rush with this. Okay, so I, that isn't working again. It's going nice and steady, it means that you're not going to slip off the edge anywhere. Okay, I'm wiping off again. Well, I'll continue to do this and then I'll bring you back. Okay, we'll just finish this last bit. Right, so that's it now for the first part. So what we have now is we have our basic white of the leaf. So we don't need this at the moment now. So this is now where the mask comes into play. So we've done the stenciling part, now we have the matching mask that's going to come over. Uh, a lot of people have, I got so many emails about how did I make the card look 3D. There's, let's move the card out of the way. Can you see the shadows on here? If I put this on here, and then can you see where the shadows are? Shadows, this is because it's raised up off the thing. Let's find something flatter. Shadows, depending on the light source, if the light is coming from this direction, then the shadows are all going to come in from this, this angle. Now, a lot of people, they'll, they'll do this and they'll go all the way around the card with a shadow. Well, shadows don't work like that. <laughs> so what we want is 
if I just hold this one here now and we can see where the shadows are falling at this side because I've got a light source over there. So what I'm going to do is replicate that. If I want it to make us look as though the leaf is actually standing off, if you see like this part here, the higher it is up off, then the further away and longer the shadow becomes. So this is all we have to do is just to think about this. If the light's coming from the top left, the shadows are all gonna be pointing downwards towards the bottom right. So this is all we have to do then on the card. So I'm going to pop this back down. I'm just going to hold it down. And I'm just going to work, instead of putting your, your stencil and your mask straight on top, is we're going to offset it slightly. Okay, so if I want my shadow to come down and away, I'm just going to move the stencil down and off a bit. So I'll start with these bottom edges first. So once I'm happy where my shadows are going to be, I'm going to start with this edge. Right, I'm just going to hold that down. If you, again, if you don't have a magnetic board, then just use some stencil tape. Some people use repositionable tape under the stencil to hold it down. Now this, like I said, these are some of the best sort of brushes for holding. So these ones, not all of them do, but most of them I can pop out like that. So what I'm going to do, again, I'm not using black ink on this. You can either use your mementos or your Versafine Clairs. Now I'm going to keep mine in the brown tones. Oh, we need a mini manimo. So I'll just stick my blending mat there again. Um, we'll do fallen leaves. So all I'm going to do with this is just pick some ink up, dab it onto my mat because that I will then use as just a palette. And all I'm going to do on here now, make sure I'm right in the right place. So as I said, my shadows are coming down from the top left. So I'm going to carry on going towards the bottom right here. And I'm just going to bring this off, this edge. And same on this one, we're just going to... So if ever when you get these brushes and you think, what on earth am I going to use these little ones for? And all we're going to do is just brush out. Just keep brushing it out because it'll just fade the shadow out then. Same again here, let's make sure we're on this right line here. Okay, so we're going to brush away, let's move that, I'm going to get it on this edge first and then just brush it away. Okay, we'll have a quick peek at this. Okay, so can you see straight away we're starting to get depth, that's the shadow. Let's do the stem. Now the stem again. Now what I will say with this is do it in two halves because obviously this can move. So I'll just do this with my fingers. So all we're gonna do with this first is pick some ink up. I'm just gonna just brush very gently off this edge. Okay, I'll keep my finger on there and I'm just gonna bring it down to here. The other thing to do is just do the base of it here. Okay, so we've started to get that effect. So again, I'm going to carry on with this bottom corner. If I stop putting my fingers in the ink like that, I'll cover that up with something. Okay, so I'm just getting these edges. Let's move my mask again. Okay, 
Okay, so can you see we're just doing a spot on edge? What I am going to do is just get a piece of cloth. Let's try and remove this ink. Okay, there's a gemstone going there. Right, let's get back to shadows. So we're doing the same again. And then we'll show you how to do it as though the leaf edges are lifted up. Let's pick some ink up, keep my hands away from it this time. So again, it's this bottom edge because the light's coming down. And this edge again, we'll do this one. And this little edge. Don't worry too much if you do go over your white because you can always come back in and do your white line again. Right, we're going on to these edges now. Let's just hold this down. Because don't forget my light's coming down. This one's just going to be a bit thinner down here. Right, I'm going to show you on this one how we do it as though the leaf edge is lifted up. So first of all, I'm just going to get my mane down in the bottom corner. And all I'm going to do now is just brush it out. So I'm not going to go to the end of the leaf, I'm just going to brush it off here. Just out it goes. Okay, so can you see now we've got as though this leaf edge has turned up. And we can do the same with this one up here. Okay, if we just brush out here. Okay, so you get in the longer shadow. The same up here now. We'll start to get our shadows in. And then down in this bottom corner where it's got to be a bit more in the depth. So any place that you want to give it the effect that it's it's lifted off the page is just to sweep out so sometimes just take a stand back and just see if there's any areas that you need to just add a little bit more shading back in Okay, I'm quite happy with that. So again, if you need to come back in and just touch any areas up, which is something we can do now, because I've gone over just a bit of the white with the pen. Okay. 
and I'll just redefine my tank. And then we're just about ready for stamping. So I'll pick some stamps and I'll see you in a moment. Right, well, we're ready for stamping now. So I'm going to use a stamp press for this part. Sometimes when you've been using a lot of white is because of the pigment base to it. When it comes to stamping, the white ink can actually absorb the your coloured ink quite quickly. So just in case you do need to re-stamp it, then in a stamp press, obviously, it's already in place. What you will need to do for this is to pop your stencil back because I don't want to stamp outside the line. So if I'm using a larger stamp than my stencil, then obviously it would stamp outside the lines. This won't make any difference to the stamping when, when you're doing it. So now I've got that lined up. In this one, I'm gonna use the Winter Cabin Medium. So all you have to do here is position where you'd like the image. So I'm gonna pop mine here with the tree. And because of the nature of this stamp, you can always use the edges to fill back in again. So we're gonna pop, there we'll do. We'll pick the stamp up. Just press down just to make sure that it's firmly attached. Now I'm going to use Versafine Clair Fallen Leaves on this one. Like I said, I don't stamp in black because it, it's just too harsh against the white. So stamping a brown, stamping a navy blue. Okay, so we're just going to give this a nice press. Just let that ink absorb. Okay, so even though this is brown, it actually looks black on here. This is why, because of the craft card or any darker coloured card stock, obviously if, if we were putting this straight onto white, it would be a paler brown colour. So obviously if this was black, it would come in even blacker than this. Right, so what I'm going to do now, is just clean the stamp and this is just one of those faux camo cloths that you can get for cars and I think they sell these for stampers um, branded ones but they're like five times the price so it's just exactly the same thing as this right so we've got that Dab my stamp to dry it. Right, I'm going to position it now so I can just fill in a bit on here. So we'll pop some more trees at this side. I'll just pop them there, move my magnet. Don't forget, we're only doing it this side at the moment. So, yeah, just that side. If there's any areas I don't want the cabin in this, I'm just going to wipe any edges off the cabin. All I really want now is the trees on this. Okay, so now we've got the extra trees in there. So we can pop this back down again and we'll just fill in this side slightly. All my magnets are sticking together. So I'm going to do this time for this side 
is just use some of the branches and um, I'm not actually going to use the stamp press for that I'm just going to pick it up so I'm just going to this time I'm just going to bend the stamp round I'm just going to pick up some ink on these branches here just add them in where I want that will do for this stamp in then so what we'll do now is we'll uh, watercolour in using the Signo ball pen right for this next bit you can either use uh, the Signo pen the Posca pen and a paintbrush or if you've got one of the water brushes so all I'm going to do is just put a bit of water on my blending mat just make sure my brush is wet just a bit of tissue there if I need to wipe off now I'm just going to use the Signo pen for this part so all I'm going to do here is just where my trees are is just add just some little white bits in the trees and this really is just random squiggles and all it is is to give the effect of snow I think sometimes at Christmas this is part of the fun of colouring in It's something I can just go so quiet when I'm doing. I'm just doing the top of the fences now. Anywhere that snow would collect. Do a bit of that fence there as well in these trees. I'm not trying to follow every single branch. It's just to give the effect of snow. the main tree the branchy one is where we can put the effect in as though it's sat on the branches so we can just where it sits in the V's You don't have to do every single branch, just wherever you fit. Right, so I think that will do for that. Right, we're going to do the cabin now, and this is the bit that I always love doing. Right, the let's start with the roof. So on here, just fill in, and then we've got like little icicles. I mean, the the cabins are not just for uh, Christmas. Depending on how you colour them in then obviously you could use them for summer cabins just make the roof into a thatched roof right, so this is just my first part again we'll just quickly fill this part in here so for this bit now what i'm going to do here is just add some white in here Get your water. What I'm going to do is just blend this out because it'll just soften it right off then without covering up all your stamping. It does look to begin with when you're doing this that you think, yeah, I've taken all the white off, but as it dries, because it is a pigment ink, then the white comes back to the top. Okay, so we'll leave that like that, let that dry off a bit. There's a chimney. We'll pop some around the chimney. And then the other thing is as well, what comes out of the chimney is smoke. So we're just going to put a 
And again, I'm just going to get the brush. And I'm just going to soften this out. Okay, so you get this lovely snow effect. So on here now, I can see I, I just need a bit more on here. Okay, and again, I'm just going to soften this out. Right, top of the door. Windowsill. Anywhere you can see on this stamp, oh, we didn't do these trees, did we? Let's quickly do these. This one. So, as a rough clue, we've already got some shadows here. Let me just quickly just squiggle where these shadows are. Take your brush, just blend these out. It just gets rid of the harshness of these lines. So it gives you your detail, but not the harshness. Ooh, we might say maybe we'll add a few more just little bits of snow dunes. Okay, get your brush. And just brush them out. So all the harsh edges have have gone, but you you're getting the effect of snow. Let's just fill these in a little bit more. Alright, so I think that part's done. Yeah, you can fill it in as much as till you're happy with it. Right, the next part now is when it comes to doing the snow, you've got two options. So you can either put your stencil back over the top and use our favourite, which is the Posca pens. And don't forget with Posca pens, always shape them. These are an acrylic based marker. So yes, you can still do lovely fine lines and everything with them. Press them obviously to activate the ink. So we can do fine lines, you can do thicker lines when it comes out. There we go. Okay, we can do finer lines. But the beauty of these pens, I'm just going to grab my stencil brush back, apologies is they are brilliant for doing the splatter effects so i'll just make sure that my stencil's over where i want it and i'm just going to tap it with my stencil brush and the beauty of this is that they are just so random are the splatters on these so they don't look like you've meticulously gone in with a pen and and splattered it and put dots on it so obviously if there's anywhere that you think oh, I could have done with one there or you can always come in and add some so I think that for now is is done that's just before I start messing everything up 
So that's the card. As we finish, you can obviously embellish it. You can add some of your gems and things on it. So there we go. Christmas. Right, I'm going to show you on the other card that we've done is how to add a tint of colour on these. Just to sort of change if obviously you don't always want white, you might be working on a navy card, card stock. So we'll do that next. Right, to do the uh, coloured, first of all it's the, the same principle as doing the other card. So you, you're going to get your stencil up to the white point. Um, what we'll do first of all is we will do the shadowing first. Now even though teal is quite a light colour, on the white it will come up nice and pale like a pastel. If ever you, you've got a pale colour, obviously on a dark hard stock, then it will always look dark. So don't worry about that, that's going to be fine for doing our shadows and things. So first of all we're going to start off again and we're going to do the shadows. And then I'll be stamping using my absolute favourite Twiggy Branch and the Silhouette Stag Deer 2. So we'll do the shadows first and then we'll get on with the stamping. So again, I'm going to assume that my light source is coming from the same direction. I've got one of my thin head brushes and we'll start off here so the same principle again I'm just taking it off this edge and then we'll do these little edges And this, this is something that's just so quick to do and it's just so effective. So at any point you can always take it off and just have a quick look as to what you're doing. So again we'll just get these edges. Make sure that they're covered. Try not to put my fingers in it this time. Let me get this edge. So I'm only doing this one a lot quicker this time. And then we'll do these edges. Do the stem now. So again, I'm just going to do this in two halves, and I can keep it still. Oh, excuse my finger. Okay, so that'll do for this one. Right, we're going to tint this white. And all we need to do for that is just put the stencil back over. I don't know where my blue brush is at the moment, so I'll use a pink one. Okay, I'm just going to use this just to dab off. And all we're going to do is just lightly brush over, just on the edges and places. OK, 
probably find some of this because I've got pink on here. I'm just going to go purple. So all we've done now is just tinted the card. So let's get them stamped up now. So I'm going to start off, I'm going to start with my deer. So I want these sort of central first. Let's find my block. just in good my general rule of thumb is if your stamp is smaller than your ink pad then take your ink pad to the stamp no other way if it's smaller than the if your stamp is smaller than the ink pad take the stamp to the ink pad right, let me just pop this here and again just give it a chance to soak in here these mementos that are quite juicy, they uh, okay, and then we're gonna let's pick the smaller thorn. No, we're not. We'll just stick with the one. Uh, leafy branch, uh, sugar branch, isn't it? This is one that's oh, I've done for years and it's just one of my all time favourites. So we want the stencil back in. So I'm just going to turn this because I, I just find it easy when I'm stamping in with I can just. There's no need to ink up the whole stamp because I don't need all of it. I'll just bring these down in here somewhere. Okay, and then I can just fill in from there with a bit more. Put some more in here. Well, it doesn't seem two minutes ago it was Christmas and it's coming around again quick. Okay, let's just have a quick look. I'll put some more in over here. Again, just making sure that we've covered. So this is just filling in just with the tip of the the branch. So there's anywhere else that you can see. Right, what we can do is just so as the here doesn't look as though it's floating in midair. Is we can put a bit of grass, so we can use the same twiggy stamp just to give the effect of grass. Uh, let's use that bit again. I think this is always the beauty of stamping is that you can create something different every time. I'm just cleaning my stamp again. Right, so I think I 
what we'll do with them both is just add a bit of glitter and then I'll bring you back see you in a moment so as a finishing touch I've added some glitter I've also managed to spill it everywhere in here um, it's just using just either a quickie glue pen or just your regular glue um, I've just obviously the tree is now all sparkly and the deer now we also do fluffy puffy which we could have used on the branches as well but it's just a lovely winter card I haven't put any snow on this one yet which I, I will come in and just add some dots and dashes of it so just to show you that obviously if you if you're working on a white card and you want to color the stencil then you can still do the same effect and still get the same 3d effect just change your colors that's all if you want to do a beautiful autumn colors i think it'll look fantastic in this stencil so all in all the uh i hope you enjoyed the demonstration uh, you can click the like click the subscribe button to be notified when we have some new videos out which hopefully once we get all sorted in here properly uh, we should be able to start getting them done on a regular basis for you thanks for watching see you